Hey, it's Don, the Auction Professor here. Today, I've got another bolo. We're going to talk about vintage and collectible puzzles. The ones you want the most are wooden, and the ones you want the most out of those are going to be the hand-cut wooden puzzles. But we're going to go to the screen right now, and we're going to talk just about puzzles today. So here's puzzles. The first one is a stave wooden puzzle. Now, stave puzzles can go into the thousands of dollars. They're very intricate. Some of them are handmade and custom ordered at one at a time. Now, these are all wooden puzzles, too. They come in a fancy box. Usually they're signed. They're numbered to some extent. It tells you how many rare pieces are in them, how many silhouettes. The actual clown figure you see there is like their motto, and that's the Rebus, if I'm not mistaken on that, which is the same thing you actually see on the box itself here, too. Pieces 515. They're handwritten the amount because the piece count could have changed possibly from puzzle to puzzle because they're each hand cut and different on some of these. So I'm just going to show you a few staves here just to get an idea. Another stave. Now this is a stacked version of it. Again, all wooden, hidden objects, well done, interesting artwork. This one went for almost $4,000. Another stave, animals, they have a lot of die-cut ones. They've got that little block that says, um, geez, I can't remember exactly what it says. Sometimes I just don't fit. Now, I'm not sure if that's to size it or, or get the shape fitting or whatever the case may be. Sometimes there's extra pieces and all kinds of other, sh other stuff like that with these puzzles. $400. They come in these little fancy boxes. Now, I've seen these, and they're not very big boxes, as you see. You see it in someone's hand. I've run into a few of these at Savers in the past. Not as high dollar as this, but we still made a couple hundred bucks off these. If you pay attention and know, because there's usually no pictures on the boxes. So, Another stave. This is another perfect example of what they do and how they do it. You can see some gap in the actual pieces where the other fish fits inside, and then it goes on down from there. Typical example. They're intricate. They're... they're they're not easy to do even for this style and few of, of actual pieces just because of the odd shapes. And you can see the character um, as well right there, that same little character. And that's in most of them that I see. $183.50. It's only 88 pieces. Another small box. 2,000 basically, 1,995 for this one, 285 pieces. You can see all the little cutouts and stuff that actually goes with it. There's the actual piece up there again. It's hand signed in many cases on some of these. So, And there's a close-up of it too. Again, they're all wood pieces. It's like a plywood of some sort, really nice quality. Another stave, real interesting example of a frog inside of a frog inside of a frog. Rather interesting, $210. Now here's another stave, perfect example of some of the bigger ones. They usually have paper. They're well taken care of in the box. Uh, they're just really nice pieces in, in all honesty. Some are signed like this one here. Um, you know, it just depends on what you have. $602 on this one here. Now we'll go into some more collectible one. This is Dungeons & Dragons Diorama. This is from 1985. This is a foreign edition of it. I very, very rarely run into any of the uh, Dungeons & Dragons puzzles. There are um, quite a few of them. Usually it's one of the cheaper ones. I might get 30 to say 60 bucks for the average Dungeons & Dragons. I'm hitting the high dollar ones today because these are the ones that everybody wants to find and these are the ones that really kind of pique my interest and should excite you about puzzles as much as I am when I see a big stack of vintage puzzles. So 575 on this one. Now this is Ravenburger. This is uh, Keith Herring, which I actually touched on in the coloring books. You should recognize it there as well. There's more than just this one. Ravensburg made some huge size puzzles. That's 32,000 pieces to this puzzle. They're roughly like six feet long for the most part. There's many puzzles that have a ton of pieces that you'd be surprised. Usually a puzzle that has more than 10,000 pieces is worth some money. Not all of them. There's some few that aren't worth much at all. If it has 25,000 or more, they're really worth some money. It's a huge monstrous set. The chart to make them and put them together is usually bunches of pieces. You can see how many bags this took. I don't know if they've counted this or what. You'd almost have to to make sure it's there or put it together. I wouldn't want to put this together in all honesty. Um, it just shows you how big this is. Now, this isn't them putting it together. This is just how big this puzzle is. Here's just another uh, Ravensburg. Now, this is a limited one. It was the first Christmas one they made. 
I'm surprised it got up this high. Back a couple years ago, this was going for 150 to say 275 ish. It's now going in the $800 range out of season in March. So again, Ravensburger. Here's just another one. This is a Disney. Now these are soft locks, so they're like squishy kind of pieces. This is like six, yeah, six feet long. Most of these are six feet long. This is forty thousand pieces. It's bigger than the other one because it's taller. Two hundred and fifty-five. That one was. This one's four hundred. It's another Ravensburger. Twelve thousand pieces. This is from a. I believe this is a painting from a Renaissance. A, um, a altar of some sort, if I'm not mistaken, in three panels. Uh, 400, as I said, on that one. Now, here is a rabbit, and I believe the W is silent, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong on that. This is a sealed puzzle 3D, basically a 3D puzzle. This one usually sells. It's St. Basil's Cathedral. Um, I believe it's actually in Russia, if I'm not mistaken, but 455 bucks on this one. Now, this one's a Puzzle 3D. This is big. I've seen this one in person put together, actually. It's all of, of uh, the island there. It's the whole of, of downtown New York, basically. Twin Towers are in there as well, too. This one usually goes for at least 250 to, say, 450 here, depending on whether it's sealed or not. This is sealed. If it's open, it still sells for a couple hundred bucks. If it's all there, and it's in excellent condition. Now, here is just a oddball one. Um, it's kind of like the Stave, but it's an Elms. This is just another brand that did the same similar thing. It's like a knockoff, maybe, or at the same time, a, a, a contemporary to Stave, possibly. $525. I've only seen a, a scant um, listing of stuff like these, these Elms in my, my uh, day. Next one is an Educa. Um, I believe that's how it's pronounced. There's 42,000 pieces in this one. Again, it's huge. You can see it takes several sheets to actually put this together. Big bags. That's a big table. This weighs a bunch. Basically 370 bucks with free shipping. Here's just another one. 24,000 Educa. Another one. Uh, again, it's huge. $300. They sold one. They have four more available. Sometimes these show up in RA uh, trips or in, in discount clearance sections or even at auctions. Usually never put together because they're just huge and daunting tasks. Most people have no place to put them together. Here's a hand cut one, Alfonso Mucha. Um, his artwork, for the most part, if I'm not mistaken, has been uh, uh, led into the uh, public sector, public domain. People will hand cut these. They'll print them on wood and then hand cut them one at a time. This is an example. They had two of them. They sold for $425. This is from another country. Um, geez, I don't remember where it was from. Doesn't really matter. The point is that it went for some good money here. Here's another one. This is done by a person, uh, BCP. He's actually doing these to order, um, just showing you what they look like. Uh, I looked up these before in the past. Note, I have one puzzle already cut and ready for immediate shipment. So basically, he's going to cut the next one when he sells one, which is typical on what people do. I do the same thing for some of our models. I'll cast one or finish it off once I sell it, because it only takes a day or so to, to do some things like this. So... If he sells one a day, you know, he's doing a pretty good living, I would say, at 300 bucks a day. Obviously, he's got some work into them, but, you know, there's many ways to do this. If you're quick with the jigsaw and stuff, you could do these pretty quickly, in my opinion. Now, the next one's a Liberty Wood Puzzle. This is a, a typical Liberty, what I see. The map ones always go, especially these National Geographic tied ones in. Um, it's just a perfect example of old world maps. There's 1,090 pieces. Again, they're wood. And it went for $305. Now, here's a Beatles set. There's more than just this. There's the original Beatles set as well, too. Uh, Yellow Submarine was very popular. This is an original from 68. It's so popular, they actually released action figures a few years back for them from this movie, as well as other shows and movies that the Beatles had done, too. So, real good item. $450. I've only seen one of these in my life. It was missing pieces in damaged condition, and it's still sold for $50 or $60. Bucks. So, just keep that in mind. The artwork is what you want. The box is usually what people really collect, because they're going to display it for the most part. Here's a Wonder Woman. Linda Carter as Wonder Woman. This one's missing a few pieces. This is an oddball one. I have not seen this one of her outside of the uniform or the costume. Uh, it's probably a J-Mar. Oh, nope. APC. I have not seen this one, as I said. But even missing pieces, they still sell. 
If it was me, I would actually cut more pieces. You can use mat board to fill these in. There's exact mat board size that is as thick as most puzzles. I will trace it out and actually cut a new piece and match the color to the my best of my abilities and sell it with the replacement pieces in it. That's what I do. If it's something valuable, it goes for more money almost every time. Next one's a promotional one. It's King Kong from 1933 with Fay Ray. This one's pretty scarce. I've only seen it once or twice in my life at a show. So this one always sells for 500 plus every single time I've seen it. Let's see if it, you can just see the pieces. I was just going to say it came in a little uh, bag. It was handed out like this literally at the theaters from what I understand from the premiere. So these are fairly scarce. They don't show up very often. Usually there's damage or missing pieces, but not this one. This one looks excellent. Usually you don't find the bag that it came in either. 850 bucks. Star Wars ones sell as well, too, so just keep that in mind. These are sealed. Sealed is what you want in most of these. They go for at least twice what the normal ones go for. Some of these will be actually graded and sent away, and the graded ones can go for 100 150 bucks a piece if you have them graded. I don't mess with grading, as, at all, as I've said before. Next one's an M.C. Escher. This one's sealed. We've had many. A lot of the museum versions of these are usually worth the most. Um, not all of them, but the more pieces you have for one of these type of puzzles, usually the better they are. This is one that I've had before, at least the brand name. I'm not going to even try try to pronounce it. Dutch ones of these for the most part, too. 250 bucks. Now, here's an early Parker Brothers. This is a pastime series, Fairyland. Believe it or not, Parker Brothers made some really exquisite puzzles. This is probably from the 20s, 30s, or 40s, somewhere in that range. Let's see if they've got a date on it. Um, no, I don't see a date. You can look these up, though. There's a Parker Brothers History Collectibles book. There are some different uh, shaped pieces in this, too. It does look like, yeah, there's a piece missing as well, as you can see right there. But you can see some different oddball-shaped Maltese cross and things like that in here, too. I loved the shaped puzzles back in the day when I was a young kid. There's a, a key, an arrow, an uh, uh, eagle, birds, all kinds of things in there. Really interesting puzzle. 1050 bucks. Now, another name you're going to look for is PAR. They're plain boxes. A lot of people will pass these up just because they think puzzles aren't worth anything, and they'll see just this with the box with just some pieces in it. I'll buy them if it's par and it's a few bucks and take a shot. Most any good par, if it's all there, is worth some good money if it's something like this, especially if it's a die cut. This has a die cut. It's got the uh, the uh, Torio door at the top actually sticking off. Um, it's really interesting. It's rounded corners, intricate pieces. Very intricate pieces, if you can see them from there. So, rather interesting. A lot of them are shaped like people and things like that. Somebody walking. $887. I'll just show you a few more so you can get the idea. Just another example. $850. Another par. Now, this is an early one. This is McLaughlin Brothers. They did books and things from the same era. And toys, too. Usually, it was wooden toys with, like, um, printed paper artwork on top. They did books all the way up to, like, World War II, maybe even later than that. So, they're collectible. If I see that name, I usually look up the item. Um, usually, you're not going to find a puzzle. It's a wooden box. You can see that. Very interesting, actually. I think the pieces are wood, but they may not be on this one. Let's actually see if we can see... Missing some pieces as well, as you can see. Quite a few pieces, believe it or not. So that's pretty good. 541 bucks for that many missing pieces, including Santa himself. So the box is what somebody wants, I'm sure. Here's another. Um, this is Parker Brothers again. Another shaped puzzle. $244. Now, here's a Transformer. 3D puzzles have been around for 20, 30 years before most people even realized it. Some of them came back farther than the 80s. There were some in the 70s and 60s. Fairly scarce that old. This is one that you may run into. A lot of the people who collect the toys or are buyers of toys to turn around and resell may pass up on a puzzle. Um, just because most puzzles like this aren't worth much money. But this is a 3D one of the Transformers. 250 bucks. The staples here, the uh, Wild and Weirdos, this is like a model uh, cars that they made. They actually made figures for these as well. Interesting puzzle. This is, I think, Jamar. Yeah, Jamar made a lot of these type. Um, TV shows, Huckleberry Hound, all that stuff goes for decent money, but nowhere near this much. The average one is, say, 15 to say 30 or 40 bucks for the decent ones that are from like TV shows and things like that. Some are worth way more like a Munsters or something. Uh, but this one's 225 bucks. 
all the horror ones go as well, too. Here's just another example. Frankenstein, another JMR, 60s-ish. In fact, yeah, 1960s. I'm sure there's a date, but... Wolfman Jack, The Mummy, they made them all, 1963. This is basically the same box as the model sets that came out. And there's two or three of those. I've talked about those in other videos as well. And the last one here is an RCA Victor. This is stated, and I don't know if that's true to be the first promotional puzzle. I don't think that's the case. Maybe the first promotional puzzle in modern day times. There were companies in the Victorian era that did make puzzles as well and do them as a promotional item. So I don't really think that's the case. And I've run into puzzles from like tea companies and things from the 1870s and 80s. So the, the title is technically wrong. This is just maybe the first advertising puzzle in modern age. I don't think, looks like there's plastic around it. I don't remember if it was sealed in plastic or it came in a little baggie like uh, the paper bags. It's hard to say. But it was made to look like a, a record of the day of Victrola. Batwing record, mind you, because of the Batwing out there. And it has uh, images of the actual performers that were singing on its label on the top of it. So just another example, $203.00. Just a, a decent mix of puzzles. Again, there's many puzzles that are worth money. We have RA'd them. We have wholesaled them on occasion. Um, but I really like the vintage ones like this more than anything else. You're not going to run across them all the time, but they're 100% well worth your time looking for. Well, there you go. There's some other items that we look for. Hopefully that gave you some ideas and some thoughts. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified when we post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell a friend.